Inside this box, we have the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 because the Kindle line just keeps expanding and the screens just keep getting bigger. So this is for the Kindle and Amazon fan who kind of wants an iPad but doesn't want to spend that much and just really loves Kindle stuff. Let's check it out. I do love Amazon's packaging. That's how easy it is. Like this is the box that it came in. I love it, although I miss my box cutter. All right. Here we go. Now this is kind of an interesting size tablet. 8.9 sits right between the 7.9 inch iPad mini and then maybe a 10 inch iPad or Nexus 10. It's all dusty. Let's check it out. Oh, it's so easy. It's just so easy to open. Okay, get out of there. Very, very similar to the Kindle Fire HD in design, of course, and actually almost seems similar in size. It's just a little bit bigger and obviously very rectangularly oriented. I'm sure that's a word. All right, let's see what else we have in the box here. Amazon continuing to leave out the power brick with its chargers. Now there's some controversy about this and I've come down on both sides of the fence, to be honest, but I kind of feel like everybody at this point probably does have some sort of a brick or a computer, so I appreciate at least the lack of waste. I also appreciate the fact that this is a nice, long charging cable. I'm never gonna get over that obsession. All right, that is basically it. Some instructions here. Getting to know your Kindle. No waste, love it. All right, let's fire this up. My biggest complaint about these Kindles is that I can never figure out where the power is. Don't laugh, you're gonna do this too. Let's see, is that it? Oh, that's it. It's the little button at the top next to the volume rocker. While we wait for this to fire up, I'm gonna go through setup and all of that so you don't have to be here for it. Let's go through the specs. The Kindle Fire has, as I mentioned, an 8.9 inch HD display. It's extremely beautiful, this display. 1920 by 1200 pixel resolution. The tablet weighs 1.25 pounds and performance is pretty good. A 1.5 gigahertz dual core processor with one gig of onboard RAM. Memory starts at 16 gigs and that price is just $299. It does go up from there and for 32 gigs with LTE, you'll pay $499. Now compared to an iPad, that's a good price. It runs the Amazon version of Android, which means you won't get all the apps available in the Android App Store, but you'll get plenty. Battery life is pretty good according to Amazon, 10 hours of continuous use. In terms of ports, you get micro USB and micro HDMI. It also has a front-facing camera for video conferencing or taking pictures. The Kindle Fire HD has dual stereo speakers that sound pretty good, and you can watch shows in high def up to 1080p. So if you're in the market for a full-size tablet right now, the options are obviously iPad or 800-pound Gorilla, the new Google Nexus 10, or something like the Kindle Fire HD. Now, what this tablet has going for it is price. Like I said, it starts at $299 for all of that Amazon goodness. So if you're already a fan of Kindle Books, if you have a Prime subscription, you like the streaming video, this is a pretty easy choice. And for the price of an iPad, you'll get 4G LTE, and that's just an extra $50 a year. So it's a pretty good value as a tablet. I have to say my only complaint about it is that the ecosystem's a little bit limited. Because it's not full Android, you won't get all of the apps. You really are just living in the Amazon world. Like I said, if that's where you live already and you don't want to spend a ton of money, this is a great option. I have to say though, for me on this table, the best value, still the Nexus 10. Sorry, Amazon.